Remember a few months ago when the hot new trend was panicking about the future of the post office? I mean, I personally found a new appreciation for every piece of junk mail that arrived at my door. Whoa, 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 let's put that Pottery Barn catalog at the top of the trash can. They paid for postage after all. Now soon after that, people seem to realize, whoa, this might all be a little more complicated than I thought, and it was on to the next problem. No solutions. So why am I talking about this issue today? Well, while everyone was looking over here, Congress just sort of got together in secret and solved this problem. That's right, I'm taking this episode out because one of the pillars on this channel is to cover the government actually trying to put out tire fires rather than just basking in the fire's glow and then moving on to the next one. So let's get into the solution. The Postal Service Reform Act, which has passed both houses of Congress with more than two-thirds support in each chamber, is now sitting on the president's desk waiting for his autograph. So enjoy this episode that'll play a little bit like chicken soup for the bureaucrat's soul. Now the problem that we were trying to solve today is that the post office is a non-profit organization, but not by choice. Now this is mainly an issue with how the post office was originally set up. You see, it's neither fully a private company, nor is it fully a government agency. Instead, it's really the worst of both worlds. It's basically Congress running a company that has to turn a profit and, on top of that, compete in the free market against other companies. Now that's gone exactly as well as you'd probably expect that setup to go. The leading cause of the post office's ongoing failure today is a simple question though. When's the last time you sent a letter? Until stamp collecting becomes the national pastime, something needs to be done to address this. Now, Since its creation, the post office has been given a government guaranteed monopoly on letters. You want to send your grandpa a thank you letter? Uncle Sam, he'll deliver it for you. He got some Civil War correspondence that we're all going to be hearing on a History Channel documentary a century and a half later. United States Postal Service got you covered. Now this letter specific monopoly was meant to compensate the United States Postal Service for an obligation that was also assigned to them by Congress. You have to regularly deliver that mail to everyone, even that guy who lives on the far corner of nowhere. Now of course, that letter monopoly had a much deeper cachet back before emails hit the market. Nowadays, it's a bit like forcing a company to insulate every home in America, but don't worry, you can pay for it by being the sole distributor of asbestos. Now unfortunately for the post office, this monopoly only covers letters. When it comes to things like packages or overnight parcel post things, well, there's plenty of competition. Think FedEx and UPS. So alright, now there's the problem, let's get to the fun part. How do you fix an unprofitable institution? Well, you could increase revenues, cut costs, accept that there's going to be losses and take it on in the government like other agencies, think Department of Energy, or you could just cut it loose and fully privatize the industry. As most of you have probably guessed, the Republican solutions focus on cutting costs. What if we don't deliver all of the mail every day or straight up privatization? Maybe we completely remove the government's involvement in delivering mail in the first place. Get rid of that letter monopoly and leave everything up to UPS and FedEx. Now, The major concern with this approach is that it would probably reduce accessibility in rural areas, either by private companies providing more intermittent services or just massively hiking up the prices to get that letter to someone in the middle of nowhere. Now, This has been the motivating factor for Republicans to work with Democrats in passing this legislation. They hopped on these reforms because they see the Postal Service as an entity in a death spiral that's particularly hard on rural Americans, as post offices shuttered and services were cut. Gotta represent your constituents. Now, On the other hand, you got the liberal approach to all this. That says, 
Let's expand the post office's opportunities to raise revenue. Maybe allow it to handle certain banking operations or just fully bring the thing into the government's fold. So how does this bill solve the post office problem? Short answer, little bit of column A, little bit of column B. Now what makes this exciting is the whole thing was less two parties compromising and more two parties excitedly just tacking more and more good ideas into a bill. The first thing this bill does is explicitly put in writing the commitment of the post office. Sorry guys, you really gotta deliver to everyone six days a week, except for federal holidays and specific predetermined geographies. Over the past presidency, Congress learned that, well, if it's not nailed down, someone's going to try to tweak it. Putting this explicitly in writing would prevent a future postmaster general from implementing a sort of cost-cutting measure that, for example, reduced the number of delivery days or the number of houses you were delivering to every day. With today's bill passed, you would now need a new law on top of this one to be passed by Congress in order to start making such cuts to the service. Good luck there. So okay, we've codified the fact that the post office has to maintain their unprofitable business plan. Now to the bigger question, where's all this money coming from? A few well placed tweaks to the system. You see, the main source of funds in this bill comes from a unique quirk of the post office that really stems from them having their rules written by the single least efficient organization in America, Congress. You see, back in 2006, they looked at the post office and said, hmm, what if you had to set aside every year a certain amount of money to prefund the next 75 years of retirements for your organization? The way your finances are looking right now though, planning on your existence 75 years in the future right now, well that is quite the bold swing. But batter up! Now this 75 year savings requirement is diverting billions from what could otherwise be operating profits into a stationary fund every year. There's no similar burden in any other private institution or government agency. We're talking about 75 years of preparedness for retirement. Just a fun little post office quirk. Now, according to the USPS themselves, under current law, the Postal Service must follow a mandated pre funding schedule of $5.5 billion per year. That's a whole lot of money to be diverting from an agency that's already seeing revenues fall independent of this rule. Now what today's bill does is it tosses out that huge revenue diverting requirement and instead transfers those retiring employees onto Medicare. Basically, the post office would no longer be paying postal retirees. The federal government would be instead. Now that unlocks a fair amount of new money that they can play around with, no longer diverting it into that holding account. As well as, on top of that, it unlocks that holding account itself. We're talking about 16 years of lockdown benefits totaling about $50 billion. That's a nice windfall. But again, not a solution to the underlying problem at hand. People, well, they just aren't mailing letters like they used to. Now the second solution to this is a bit of a necessary evil for anyone who doesn't want to nationalize the post office. You see, back in 2006, 2006 again, man, Congress was playing fast and loose. They passed an act that set post office prices. From there, the post office could neither raise nor lower prices beyond the rate of inflation. Now in 2020, that might give you a fair amount of price and flexibility, but for the more than a decade period that saw nearly complete phasing out of letters, well that brought low inflation, meaning that prices couldn't really be set to reflect new realities on the ground. Unless, of course, Congress wanted to swoop in, save the day, and pass a bill making mail more expensive to send also known as the most boring way of committing political suicide. With this bill, Congress is finally accepting reality, looking at their hands and saying, yeah, this is, this is a bit too much for us. Neither us nor inflation should be the ones setting these prices. 
Instead, this bill increases funding autonomy and control for the post office to increase its prices commensurate with its mission of postal service. Now, translating that into English, eh, you can raise prices to the point where you're no longer operating at a loss. Now, lastly, there's this section in the bill that permits the Postal Service to now take on a few side hustles for local governments. As long as those side hustles don't harm the core Postal Services, and as long as those side hustles provide funds to pay for the Post Office's institutional costs. Maybe we're talking something like operating as a bank, or maybe another proposal that hasn't come up yet. So there you go. With these legal changes, it seems as though Congress has given the post office a new lease on life. It passed both houses with more than two-thirds support and is on the president's desk for signature. This might not all be the most mind-blowing accomplishment out there, but we can all just sort of close the book on that post office panic everyone was going through a few months ago. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.